What's cooking, ladle gang? I'm not cooking anything because I'm, I'm in a I'm in a tub. But I'm sure a remake of a beloved classic is being cooked up right now. We live in the era of remakes, remasters, and whatever the heck Final Fantasy VII remake is. It says remake, but is it actually a remake? No. Nostalgia sells. The grubby Goomba gamers love revisiting their younger years. I'm no exception. I eat these reissues up. I buy them all the time. I actually recently went through Final Fantasy VII Remake, and it's great. But the entire time I was going through it, I couldn't help but think of the inevitable remake of many other classic games. Like, when is Frogger getting this kind of treatment, huh? But the game that lingered in my mind the most was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time is revered as one of the greatest games ever conceived from the womb of gaming. I'd be able to afford two GameCube games if I had a nickel anytime I saw someone mention its Metacritic score of 99, which is the highest a game has ever received on the website. In 1998, Ocarina was a phenomenon for gaming. It paved the way for hundreds upon hundreds of games down the line. Even games released today still show their Ocarina influences. Many game developers cite Ocarina as the golden game in terms of design. I think it more than deserves a Final Fantasy VII Remake treatment, because it was just as massive as Final Fantasy VII in the 90s. Ocarina is many people's favorite game including my brother who can't accept that Majora's Mask is just the better game. A remake would sell millions upon millions because of the N-word. Nostalgia. Ocarina of Time was already remade on the 3DS, and what a glorious remake that is. Very spiffy, rather shiny like a brand new ladle, ooh, I love it very much. But the game will eventually get remade again. This segment of time we live in is only a blip in the history of humanity, and it's still the early years of gaming in the grand scheme of time. Remakes of remakes are inevitable, and we will see them in our lifetime. Damn, welcome to Existential Monday! Whenever the time comes where Nintendo busts out the defibrillator and brings Ocarina of Time back, I have a vision of what I would want it to be. This isn't what I truly think a remake would look like, it's more of a fantasy. Because we all know, Nintendo will just take the 3DS remake and upscale it and call it a day even though the year's 2067, they'll still do that, yeah. But take some time, grab my freshly sanitized hand, and join me in dreaming as I take you through what a remake of Ocarina of Time could look like. The world of Hyrule depicted in Ocarina of Time is gorgeous, mesmerizing, and memorable. From the village secluded in the Lost Woods, to the looming Death Mountain, from the bustling market to the breathtaking Lake Hylia, each area is distinguished and unforgettable, and has less polygons than 2B's bosom. When the word remake is thrown around, the first thing typically questioned are the graphics, despite graphics being the least important aspect of a game, as The Legend of Zelda has proven time and time and time and time and time again. How drastically would these distinguished areas change with updated graphics? This question has clearly been on so many people's minds, because every week I see a new Ocarina of Time HD recreation in some game engine, and they all paint a clear picture of the future, even if sometimes they look a little too realistic. I'm personally of the mindset that every Zelda game should look like perfection, I, I mean Breath of the Wild. That art style just nails it for me personally. Ooh, But the fan recreations are more accurate to modernizing the original vision, so that's acceptable. And that's it for the graphics. No more. Goodbye. Bye-bye. No more graphics. Get out of here. Now for what really matters. Design. I compared this dream remake to Final Fantasy VII Remake a bit in the intro, because it's really what inspired it. Obviously, I'm not the only one thinking this either, because games media outlet Polygon posted an article while I was writing this. 
The article in question talked about how Skyward Sword could benefit from that Final Fantasy VII style of remake. Skyward Sword. Yeah, okay. And as with most things, it sent Twitter into an uproar saying how Ocarina should get one instead. And the Twitter mob was right. The game is from 1998. Do you know what else happened in 1998? Google was founded that year. The world has changed. We need an upgrade. We need an upgrade. We need an upgrade. The biggest thing that has evolved in games is the importance of story. Even Zelda has grown and adapted to it with the sprawling epic of Skyward Sword, or with the beautiful, subtle storytelling of Breath of the Wild that I'll defend until the day I get too tired of defending it. But I'll go on record and say Ocarina's story is actually pretty damn good. It's simple, but the smaller conflicts and characters tied to said conflicts are what make it shine. Whenever these characters are present, at least. What a remake really needs to do is give us more time with these characters, the sages. Some of them get ample time, sure, but others like girl boss Naboru, she gets next to nothing. My queen deserves so much better. Each character is just beautifully intertwined with the conflict in their region. Darunia has to save his people from Volvagia. Impa needs to protect Kakariko village. Naboru fought for justice by betraying her tribe. Rudo needed to unfreeze her domain. Saria had to save the Kokiri from monsters. And Raru had to annoy the f out of us. Each one of these conflicts are lightly touched upon, and it's solid, but it could be more. Imagine cutscenes where Deku Baba sprout from the ground and attack that piece of shit Mido, or seeing Darunia actually fight Volvagia. Pair these cutscenes with a touching monologue from a sage, and you have a far more appealing narrative. The only sage that kind of got this treatment was Impa. We saw Kakariko Village burning, and that scene is one of the most standout cutscenes of any Zelda game. This very cozy town, a place of peace, home of the chicken lady who's allergic to chickens. Never let anything stop you from following your dreams. Kakariko was finally suffering from Ganon's calamity. The scene was ultimately used to show off Sheik a bit more rather than Impa, but it was still incredibly impactful and I think every sage could benefit from a similar setup. And let's not forget the most iconic sage of them all. Sheik. Or Zelda. I would argue Ocarina's plot twist about Sheik's real identity is currently the most well-known gaming spoiler in existence. Right next to that little small Final Fantasy VII spoiler. And unlike Hyrule Warriors, I don't think a remake should toy with a spoiler. I think it should be hidden and revealed in the same fashion. Sheik's gender should remain androgynous. Don't make it overly feminine like Hyrule Warriors. Zelda is supposed to be hiding like Mulan. Would Mulan wear this kind of drip? No. Hyrule Warrior Sheik really betrays her character's objective in my opinion. I love the designs of most characters in that game, but Sheik's is just... It's just so insulting, and it's frustrating to look at. She's still my main, though. Make Sheik's design more like Smash Ultimates, if necessary. I think that's the best look for Sheik. Sheik is my absolute fave character from Ocarina, and one of my faves in the entire series. But it's tough to explain why. Sheik as a character in Ocarina is good, but they don't do much. Like, look at them. They're badass, they're mysterious, they're a ninja, all these things are there, but not to the extent it could be. My love for them likely stems from my weird ninja obsession as a child, but like, who didn't have that phase? Expanding Sheik's character further would not only benefit their character, but the game's plot. Expanding it by giving them a playable segment. There have been two games that have heavily influenced this idea of mine. First being the intermission episode of Final Fantasy VII Remake, where you play as the iconic Yuffie. The one and only Yuffie. Playing as Yuffie gives the player a new perspective on the plot that happens during the base game. There were so many awesome moments in this short little side story that made me really appreciate the main story a lot more. Another game that opened my eyes to this narrative style is the remake of Near Replicant. 
without spoiling too much because I consider this game to be a near masterpiece and I highly recommend it to any Zelda fans looking for a darker story. Please, please play near, please play near, please play near. At one point in near, you're given the opportunity to get in the mind of another central character. This is brand new content to the remake and it stands above 95% of the original game. It flat out rules. And I think Ocarina of Time would greatly benefit from it. Controlling another character in a Zelda game isn't very common, but when it does happen, it rocks. It just rocks, dude. In Majora's Mask, while you are technically Link, when you put on a transformation mask, you feel like you're another person. And an even more specific example, Wind Waker. Controlling Makar and Medley has always been a highlight for me. I don't think it's too ridiculous to imagine a playable Sheik. And I'm not suggesting to give Sheik a giant chunk of the game. Although it is called Legend of Zelda. Throw in a few sections where you play as Sheik. Maybe one during the time skip where they're training with Impa or first going out on their own. I honestly dream of a section that takes place right before Kakariko is attacked by Bongo Bongo. Have Sheik find a back entrance to the Shadow Temple that leads to a brand new area in the temple with brand new puzzles. You know, the Shadow Temple is canonically a torture chamber, so there's bound to be another entrance somewhere. Someone tried to escape and successfully did it, I'm sure. And besides, Shadow Temple is literally the shortest temple in the adult portion of Ocarina of Time, so giving Sheik this would really extend this super interesting dungeon. I really love the Shadow Temple! And then one more final piece on Sheik. When this game released in 1998, we were treated to one of the greatest art pieces in gaming. It's Link and Sheik fighting side by side. Where was this in the original game? I would lose my damn mind if this actually happened. Whether you control Link or Sheik in this instance, it could be a really intense and memorable battle that would break up the temple trekking while fleshing out Sheik's story in their relationship with Link making Sheik's identity reveal that much more impactful. I just really want to see them fight side by side. As for how Sheik would play, I imagine they'd use their daggers from their final smash in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, while going the speed of Link with a bunny hood in Majora, and their attacks would be as swift as Young Link's, essentially a faster version of the combat. Also, can we just have it where you can teleport using Deku Nut? Because that concept has boggled my mind for years and I, I still don't get it. I still don't really understand how it happens, where did Impa go, where did she go, what the heck, I, I need answers. Before getting out of the wilderness of lore, I'm going to PK you with one more addition that I desperately want. A prologue. Link is told after the forest temple how his mother brought him to the Deku Tree when he was a child and asked the Deku Tree to watch over him. I would just love to see the game open with a cutscene that briefly shows a battle of the Hyrulean Civil War and then it leads into watching a woman run into the Lost Woods, and it's Link's mother, and she runs into the Deku Tree. This would be such a small, but incredible intro to the epic story that's told in Ocarina. And then later on, once Link finishes the Forest Temple, we could revisit the cutscene with more context. I think that would be an absolute treat. Alright, enough lore talk for now. I'll probably pop back into the lore pool later, but for now, let's talk about the combat. What do I see the combat becoming in this fantasy remake of mine? Honestly, about the same. I'm not a game designer, so it's tough for me to really suggest a different style of combat. Personally, I'm a huge sucker for parry and dodge systems. Breath of the Wild is just ecstasy to me. Seeing something like that in Ocarina would put a silly little smile on my face. Speeding the combat up, adding physics to ranged weapons, and making everything more accurate would make the combat system pretty solid in my eyes. There doesn't need to be much changing. Back in 1998, the combat was banging. Reviewers were always just praising it, saying it's one of the best combat systems ever. But do you know what else got a lot of praise? Well, the entire game, but mostly the dungeons. How would these dungeons survive a remake? In Final Fantasy VII Remake, the dungeon areas received additional areas to make the game longer. A lot longer. I don't like that, and that's my least favorite part of Final Fantasy VII Remake. So in this hypothetical remake of Ocarina, I would just love to see a one-to-one -one recreation of the dungeons. 
If they need to throw in a few new chests and maybe an extra room or two, then that's swell and dandy. I'm sure the Water Temple needs that to fix that disastrous design mess. As long as the dungeons don't feel like padding, you know what, I'm cool with anything. As for the iconic bosses of Ocarina, some tweaks would be nice, like adding in a new face. As much as I'm not a huge fan of Majora's Mask 3D, I appreciate the new phase in Georg's fight, because it felt like a brand new content to my favorite game ever. I still prefer the original fight, but it's still cool to see some ideas that they might have had in the original development cycle. If each temple boss could receive something in that vein, it'd be pretty awesome. Especially Twin Rova. God, I don't like Twin Rova. Can we fix that fight, please? It's not fun. It is not fun. I don't like this fight. Now, behind a playable chic section, this is my biggest want. This idea may sound out there when I first present it, but if Nintendo did this, I would have so much respect for them. But they won't. And I know you're all gonna laugh at me like wild hyenas, but hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. In the Zelda timeline, Ocarina of Time is the divergent point. Depending on what happens at the end of the game, it splits into three timelines. One where Link defeats Ganon and stays as an adult, one where Link defeats Ganon and returns to the past, and one where he loses to Ganon. I would absolutely love if they implemented this into the game. Perhaps once striking down Ganon, Zelda gives you the choice if you want to return to the world seven years ago or if you want to stay as an adult. I don't really understand why she got to make the choice in the first place, but whatever. Depending on what you choose, you receive a different ending. The child ending would be the most similar to the original game, except maybe add an extra scene or two at the end to connect to Majora's Mask, that would, that would make me really happy. The adult ending could end with the reconstruction of Hyrule and Link and Zelda growing closer, maybe even hinting at Wind Waker in some way, even though that's like thousands and thousands of years in the future, I'm pretty sure. And as for the third timeline split where Link dies, imagine if every time you died to Ganon in the final fight, a cutscene played showing the beginning of that timeline split. You know, similar to Banjo-Kazooie's quit screen, where if you quit, you see the bad ending. I think that'd be super interesting. As long as you can restart the fight afterwards, of course, and it just doesn't cut to credits. As long as you can restart, as long as it's not permanent, that'd be so cool. Once again, that's a major expectation from Nintendo, especially when Al Numa hates the timeline. Kind of. Does he actually hate it? I feel like he doesn't hate it. He's so flippy floppy on it. Man, I, I don't know. Enough about lore and combat, let's get into the nitty gritty, the little small things that would make this game so much more fun. Our world has progressed significantly since Ocarina first released. Most everyone in first world countries uses smartphones. Almost every household has a computer. And Rick Roll has hit 1 billion views on YouTube. Technology has come a long way, baby! And with more powerful games, certain quality of life features are mandatory at this point. Ocarina of Time isn't a perfect game, despite my brother who has finished less than 10 games in his lifetime says. Here's a quick rundown of what I would absolutely love to see in a modern remake of this gem. <sighs> side quests. Ocarina of Time side quests aren't very good, to be honest. Hey, stop. Seeing an organized side quest menu with details on what to do would make these generic Gary quests far more manageable. Kind of like the Bomber's Notebook, but more organized with more information. Ocarina's UI is iconic as hell, but I don't know how well it would mesh with a modern art style. As much as I love the whole blue-green-yellow button aesthetic, it doesn't match the tone. The design is hot and playful, like, like Dominique from my trip to Cancun. Please call me, I miss you. The UI would likely need some updating to look more modern, closer to the 3DS version. Make iron boots an item for the love of God! Whenever this game is remade, I'm sure they'll do this because the 3D version did it, Wind Waker did it, and Twilight Princess did it. You know, if if they don't, then they'll be hearing from my attorney. Honestly, I can't I can't do this anymore. I'm getting real nitpicky here, but can we please get a better camera for the stealth sections in the castle? It's actually abysmal and easily one of, if not my least favorite part, on replays of Ocarina. Sure, after playing the game 776 times, you know exactly where to move, but that first playthrough I had back in the days before Amazon ruled the world was disastrous. 
I just want to get to Zelda. Just stop catching me. This is annoying. This is frustrating. I need a better camera, please. I don't know where I'm walking. But hey, that music do be fire, though. Woo! The Ice Era was seemingly added last minute into Ocarina's development as a fun little reward for doing the very padded Gerudo training ground. They should take what Majora did and make the Ice Arrows actually useful by allowing Link to make small ice caps in the water. This was always my favorite arrow as a kid and I have no idea why. Probably because it had little significance and that's relatable. <laughs> ah, damn. Please, for the love of all things holy, have the bunny hood make you run faster. I love rolling around Hyrule Field as much as the next nostalgia-filled 90s kid, but damn, running fast in a bunny hood is the most satisfying thing ever. I am once again on my knees, pleasuring Majora's Mask in all the right places for everything it did to improve upon Ocarina. Please do this. I know the whole Gabora Gabora tutorial owl talking a lot has been a meme since memes were invented, but the memes have a point. This owl needs to be cut in dialogue. Cutting cutting his dialogue. Less writing. Less writing. Or at least make it so the auto-select button isn't on yes when he asks if you want to hear his pointless blabber again. God, ah! I feel like every YouTuber just saying this, but come on. <laughs> and the smallest final detail that I want to bring up is just having some sort of Skulltula tracker. Gold and Skulltula are cool, and I'm a genuine fan of the whole collectathon aspect of it. I grew up on rare games, of course I like the collectathon aspect. But if we could have a dedicated map that shows where we found them already, that would be really handy dandy. I'm sure there are a ton of quality of life changes that Ocarina desperately needs, like making the giant Posei quest not the worst thing in the whole Zelda series, but that's all I have off the top of my head. And I don't want to make this video longer than it already is. How long has this been going on anyways? Let's wrap this up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I touched on this earlier with graphics, but technology has gone the Olympic gold for jumping leaps and bounds in the past two decades. Oh yeah, we got a technology revolution, and you know what they say, the technology revolution always happens before the robot revolution. Woo, let's go. <laughs> With games getting out of the megabytes and into the gigabytes, there can finally be more in Ocarina of Time. More. Just, just more. MORE! Ocarina of Time's Hyrule felt like a living and breathing world. In 1998, we were used to the low amount of models in an area, but now time has changed. The Warrior series exists. We need people everywhere. Castletown specifically needs to be more packed, make it feel alive, maybe even fill out the Temple of Time. I want a bustling city in Zelda. That's one thing Twilight Princess got right. Same with Kakariko. I get Kakariko is supposed to be this lovely, cozy town, but throw more people in there, come on. Throw them all in there, get more people there. Same with Goron City, Zora's Domain, sprinkle in more people everywhere. Maybe not Kokiri Forest because, you know, adding a new character there feels weird because it's such a character-driven village and there's not supposed to be a lot of them, so maybe not there, but everywhere else. Add travelers in the open world. I love that about Breath of the Wild, strolling around Hyrule and, hey, there's a traveler on their horse. Wow, people live in this world. That's interesting. Hyrule Field. Seven years go by when Link lifts the Master Sword, right? After lifting it, Link walks into Castletown and boom, destruction, depression, redeads, chaos, calamity. But only in Castletown. You leave there and Ganon's calamity hasn't really affected anywhere else. It's just the normal world. Not, not much has changed. It's just as happy as it was seven years prior. Let's change that. Throw some enemies in the overworld. Have damaged areas. Throw in some enemy encampments. We need to feel Ganon's wrath. You have to make the whole world look like a giant evil pig just ran through it. That's what we need. This would heighten the stakes of the story, and it would make the world so much more believable. And finally, now that we're finally in an era where epic stories are told with a symphonic soundtrack, it's time, it's time for a complete overhaul of one of the most iconic video game soundtracks in history. Saria Song, Gerudo Valley, Song of Storms, The House Theme, these tracks are timeless, but they could use an upgrade. 
Bringing it back to Square Enix for a moment, my absolute favorite part of the entirety of Final Fantasy VII Remake has to be the music. It is an unbelievable soundtrack, and in my opinion, it surpasses the original soundtrack, which was already fantastic. But the breathtaking rearrangements, remixes, and new original compositions just blow me away. My like, god, Genova sounds so good now. Ocarina has the power to do this too. Just imagine hearing Gerudo Valley in an official symphonic soundtrack that isn't Zelda's 25th anniversary version. That would just make my heart flutter. Asaria's song rearrangement that throws in hints of the minuet of Forest? That would have me in tears, man. <laughs> oh, I'd be crying. And the title theme? The title theme? <laughs> Good night, world, I would pass away. Yes, there have been 6,000 fan albums that provide incredible remixes and rearrangements of Ocarina's soundtrack, and I am in no way discounting them at all in the slightest. In fact, go stream Hero of Time by Eric Buckles. Like, calling that fan album breathtaking is an understatement. But hearing the original composer Koji Kondo's vision of a remixed Ocarina of Time album is what I want. It's what I need. I need I need to hear the music come from his head. It might not be the best versions out there, but it's from the god himself. The father of these incredible songs that have shaped the gaming community. The music would be a bow on a potentially incredible game. Ocarina of Time is dated. A remake is inevitable. I just hope it's a super turbo remake plus like Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's what it deserves. The game that changed gaming as a whole. The game that is still widely considered to be one of the greatest games of all time. And I'd love to see it receive a proper remake to remind the world how excellent this game is. While writing this script, I read some older reviews of Ocarina, my favorite quote coming from GameSpot, where Jeff Gertzman said, This is the masterpiece that people will be talking about 10 years down the road. It has been longer than 10 years, and here we are, still talking about this legendary game. So let's get that remake. Mostly because it could lead into a huge remake of Majora's Mask, which is the only thing I care about. Thanks for watching.